to this M&T program, I thought, okay, like 50% I'd sp be spending time with business at Wharton and 50% I'd be sp spending time with engineers. And I was spending 90% of my time with engineers. So I ended up running for student government in, in Wharton, just only Wharton people could vote. And I think student government gets a bad rep for whatever, being people who are only out there for votes, but I literally just did it to, to meet people um, in Wharton and, and I ended up accidentally winning, which was yeah. kind of funny. Um, How do you but... accidentally win? Dude, that's fucking crazy. Hey guys, welcome back. We've got a new episode out today, and today we have someone who's really interesting, and I'm actually really excited for this episode. We've got Jay Metalker from UPenn. He's a senior. He's studying like a mix of business and engineering, which is super cool. And on top of that, from what I've been told, Jay is just a great person to just talk to about things. He's super interesting, and I'm sure this is just going to be one of those episodes where we go on about random things, but in the most interesting ways. So, Saad, why don't you take away the plug before we go any further? Guys, before we even start, the last episode I showed a knife. I don't know if it worked or not, but like... Why are you showing it? Guys, knife? please hit the like and subscribe button. I might... <laughs> I don't know, man. I just have a knife around. It's just lying around. I don't give a shit. But like, hit the like and subscribe button, guys. Please, it really does mean a lot. Um, it, we need to blow past 550 subscribers. And by the way, thank you guys so much for 500 subs. Really, really does mean a lot. And with that, what is up, Jay? How are you doing? Tell us a little bit about yourself. What's up, guys? Thanks for having me on. Congrats on 500 subs. That's awesome. Thanks. Thanks. Um, yeah. So yeah, thank, thanks also for the interest <laughs> on mine, of course. <laughs> senior at Penn studying business and warden and comp sci and engineering pretty brutal combination honestly but but I'm a senior at this point so just trying to just trying to graduate bro now. bro what the fuck were you thinking bro what the fuck were you thinking man you know the thing about it was I was I was into math and physics in in high uh -huh. school and I also did ran a small business and when I was looking for for cool for schools for colleges I was thinking oh you know, engineering business, it's right up my alley. Uh, little did I know that math and physics isn't really the best uh, preparation for coding and computer science. And entrepreneurship is, is, a, is a different mm -hmm. skill than a, a typical undergrad business education. So definitely was, was a little un unexpected, but definitely unexpected, but have learned so much and unbelievable people in the program, just surrounded by so many smart people. Um, I mean, it's called it's called Jerome Fisher M T for any high school high schoolers out there that are looking for something like that. But um, awesome. Honestly, it sounds like the type of program I would have was that, to apply to. What was your business? If I knew it with? existed. Hmm. What's up, what was that, Tom? Yo, Salman, you you you've always wanted to apply to all these weird programs, man. Like like you like I remember like you you were telling you on another episode you were like I would have loved to apply to apply to be an airline attendant. I'm like, dude, Salman, that is completely different to what I, you ended I, up doing. I would love like, to like, have been an airline like attendant. Like this one's a little bit then, more more out, more out there. I could yeah. do that for my whole life, but that sounds really fun. But with regards to this, this is something I would have actually loved. To it do is fun. I currently did a degree in engineering with a minor or certificate in entrepreneurship. Because like I do love the idea of running small yeah. businesses and you know taking a product to market. So honestly, if I'd known about that program, I would one hundred percent have applied to it. But I didn't, and I'm here, and life worked out. So I guess Massive it's still business. okay. <laughs> things worked out. Yeah, yeah so I mean, things, this things won't remain a small business. Out. This will be a bigger business. Yeah, a one bigger thing I business, will say, though, not just small. Bro. Is <laughs> if UPenn's comp sci program is anything like the one at Purdue. The hardest classes, some of them were maths. Like our math department was goddamn terrible, man. It was by far the hardest class I've ever taken. For my final math, um, so we had, I think, one, two, three, four, five math classes I had to take. For the fifth one, which I took junior year, I didn't know anything. I had no clue about what was happening. Nothing made sense. Uh, we had our final exam coming up. I studied harder than I've ever studied, and like the night before, I still knew nothing. I had looked at the past exam questions that I had, and the ones that I'd solved, and the ones I'd looked at the solutions for, and I still didn't understand why I was doing any fit. So I picked up the three past exams I had, I counted the numbers of A's, B's, C's, D's, and E's, and averaged them out, and on the actual exam, it was 20 multiple choice questions. I think I solved like 
between three and ten of them I tried to solve. Uh, for a lot of them, it was like, okay, these answers, like, these answers don't look right, so I crossed them out. And then at the end, I went over the entire exam, I picked randomly from, like, you know, a letter between A and E. And then at the end, I, like, tallied them up, and I was like, okay, I have one more A and one less C. So I picked a random A, I turned it into a C. <laughs> and my grade went from, like, a C to a B plus after that exam. <laughs> oh my god. Wait, what? So, so I will say this, uh, if, if our exams had multiple choice on them, I would probably employ a very similar approach to that. Unfortunately, they were all open ended. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think, I don't think that, that could have worked for me. Um, but, but we do have at, yeah. at, at Penn CompSci, we have this, this class called CIS 160. Uh, m- most CompSci freshmen take it their freshman fall and it's widely considered to be just like a brutal class that just screws people over and is pretty brutal oh, yeah. so i i wouldn't say our math department is is crazy difficult but that that class is a is probably like the weed out class for for comp sci um mm-hmm. actually i was i was talking about this before but mm. um that class my freshman fall was occupying i would say 90 percent of my time and when i when i did this when i applied to this mnt program i thought okay like 50 percent i'd sp- be spending time with business at Wharton and 50% of be sp- spending time with engineers. And I was spending 90% of my time with engineers. So I ended up running for student government in, in Wharton, just only Wharton people could vote. And I think student government gets a bad rep for whatever being people who are only out there for votes, but I literally just did it to, to meet people um, in Wharton and, and I ended up accidentally winning, which is yeah. kind of funny. Um, How do you but- accidentally win? Dude, that's fucking crazy. So it Dude, was, it was kind of like- I, Like I, I'm the one. It was kind of like, you know, there's there's the dining halls and you walk up, you walk in and you just greet people. And I think a couple of weeks into the semester, it's it's not like the first week of freshman year where you can just meet people and say hi. It's people have kind of established friend groups and it's a little bit awkward to just go up to new people. So this was a great way to just start a conversation. Hey, I'm running for, for Wharton, uh, for Wharton class chair. Would you guys be interested in, in talking? And it was just a great conversation start. And I think... Penn has has like four undergrad schools. It has nursing, it has engineering, it has just the college, and then it has Wharton, and um, and so it has all those schools. Um, and so I think about half of my conversations ended up, I ended up saying, you know, if you could vote for me, that'd be great. And they just said, oh no, I'm in nursing. Um, and I ended up, and then I ended up saying, oh, I don't care. I just did this to meet people, anyways. Um, so I made I made I would say half of my friends from from Penn that I see even today and say hi to yeah. just on campus just from doing that um, that's that's genius that's honestly the smartest play ever i know like right now especially it's it's hard for a lot of college students to meet people yeah especially because as you said like first week of freshman year you can go talk to anyone but after that week or two is over meeting new people is insanely hard i know a lot of transfer students have trouble meeting people because who do you go and talk to right yeah. but I, I love that idea right there. That's just a genius I, I, way to meet people. I, I, and here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, Jay over here. Too, so. Jay over here had that. Jay over here had that little little thing going for him. Like he was he was running for student student government and all that. For people who don't have that, I'm a, I'm a big believer of just straight up just going up to a random group of people and just being like, hey, my name is Saad. My name is Jay. What's up? Uh, you've got a nice tie. You've got nice shoes, and just compliment them, and and just like you know, just start a conversation. I'm a yeah. big believer of that. I'm. It's really really hard. I understand that, but I feel like that is what real confidence is. Just going up to a random group of people or a random person and just being like, "Hey, what's up, dude? I'm I'm really digging your shirt over here." And then you just vibe off that, and then you just take it from there, like sure. like over here. Yeah. I do. Yeah, I, I do. That works. I will add on that. Works. I will add on that and even maybe a less extreme approach to that is just I think there's a lack of proactivity. I don't know I don't know if that's just like a general thing or, or how I would say it, but being a proactive person just going yeah. out there, putting yourself out there, whatever form you're comfortable in is such an it's so important I think in any aspect of life that you're looking at. Um it, it really it, it's yeah. done me wonders just yeah. being more proactive. Um and I wasn't always that way and it has re- it For really sure. has changed my outlook. Um, so I think it's all in the same vein as that, as that points out. Dude, that's, Do I, I agree, totally agree, but I also you, think, I think what a lot of people realize when they try this out is that it can be really draining, like socially, to put yourself out there. 
especially because hmm. at least like at the colleges we've gone to everyone's always doing something you're running around left and right the workload's not manageable so for the most part when you approach people even if they're good people who would like want to get to know you they're just in positions where like oh shit dude i have an assignment due in like 30 minutes i've got to run yeah and i think i really admire yeah. the energy that it takes to go out and just say hi to a group of people and meet them so yeah it's, it's, it's got its ups and downs but i think it's, it's something people do, need to do one, one way to one hard. way to one way to combat that is just like okay let's say a person does have an assignment due in 30 minutes be like hey dude i really think we vibed in like the two minutes we talked give me your number i'll hit you up this weekend or and we'll, and we'll set something up and then you just go from there and you meet their friends and then you know it, it expands into a big clusterfuck of people just wanting to get to know each other so yeah yeah for sure i think it's I think, I think it's just about like you know just going out and just like talking and making an effort Making an effort as a month, it is very, very draining for the for the wrong type of people. Yeah, but also right now, if it's just that's not you, then just harder yeah. than ever because you yeah. can't walk up to people. Of course, you have to at the very least be wearing a mask, and people are just you know they're trying to socially distance themselves. When someone's walking towards me on the sidewalk, I will yeah. walk off the sidewalk because I want to give them space. Because you know we're really? all trying to social distance. Really, yeah, you'll dude. walk. You, yeah. You, like wait, wait, you both would people, actually walk both the people sidewalk, will like, walk when a person's you both people uh-huh. walk off the sidewalk you know like you move uh-huh. like extremely to the other side to really the space. yeah really yeah. that is that that's is interesting tough. i don't know that happened that's tough i mean what about you jay I, what have you seen what, what are the crazy fucking things you've I, seen? i will say that that's absolutely the case um i visited campus last weekend actually just to say hi to friends before it got too cold and before we couldn't do things outside anymore um and it was it felt like it very much felt mm-hmm. like a pandemic like i'm i'm quarantined home in connecticut right now it's not it doesn't feel as everyone's wearing a mm-hmm. mask it feels in a, in the suburbs it's generally easier to social distance whatever in philly it really felt like a pandemic and you really mm-hmm. didn't want to walk next to someone on the sidewalk it is a it's a tough experience but i will say for the for the kids in in college like the freshmen that are just starting out I think the best thing you can do is just pursue the activities that you're really passionate about. Let's say you really are interested in debate, just join the debate club, just do things. And that's a good way to just cultivate relationships, mm. things like that. And that's also where the proactive part plays Or start in. a podcast, dude. Start a fucking <laughs> join, podcast. Join a Talk club. to it's people right. all over the right. world. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so Jay, I love what were you I love the social in? commentary. Like I love it. I love, uh, I love this social commentary. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. Oh, unreal, unreal. <laughs> so besides student government, what all were you involved in? I mean, like besides, of course, student government and your extremely hard-sounding major. <laughs> um, well, I think another big thing that I did on campus was was club tennis. I mentioned that. Well, Roland Garros just finished actually the. Nadal Djokovic final and that was I, I'm a Djokovic fan personally so I thought I was a little bit yes. upset Nadal won in straight sets I actually. wish I watched tennis that's cool what do you guys think the of, only two tennis players I know are like fucking Ro- dude I only know two people man Roger okay. Federer and fucking Djokovic and maybe Nadal, and maybe Nadal. yeah three yeah. people yeah <laughs> so Nadal was wearing a custom yeah. million dollar watch on the field oh is that right yeah by I Richard actually didn't Neal. know that I actually it's it's that. it's a work of like engineering damn all the tennis players do have they Jake all do have, have watch big watch guy though, so. yeah dude, watch, big sponsorships watch are massive in tennis it's, huge I, it makes me want to be a tennis player just so i could get like a nice watch i think sure it'll probably the, break yo but... salman do you know where watch sponsorships are huge do, do you know where they're huge Ra- motorsports racing f1 bro watch sponsorships are huge really? there even gt3 really? racing series they're huge. You've got, yeah, yeah you, you've got Lamborghini being sponsored by Richard Meal all the time. Like they're big, their Lambos have like those Richard Meal banners all over their windscreen. And like, you know, you've got other watch companies like, you know, investing into other uh, you get the companies as well. Yeah, I was reading that a lot of the tennis players, a lot of the money they make is not actually from the prize money in the tournaments, but from the sponsorships and from the endorsements oh, for sure. from, from watch brands and, and things of that sort. You can't even guarantee prize money, right? Like, if thirty-two people enter a tournament or a competition, not the most people aren't getting prize money. No. But that's still, if you're at that point where you're in a professional competition, 
you can bet that this person's life career is being a tennis player and you've got to, you've got to have a system that supports them in a way where they're financially well off even if they don't win yeah but there's also, actually been a lot of talks but about also prize if, money. if i'm nadal if i'm nadal or if i'm djokovic and i'm in that position of being the 1% of all tennis players on the planet I'm betting all my company's money on that guy to promote my brand because at the end of the day all eyes are on that one or two those one or two people because yeah. and those people can like rep your brand the best or one or one of the best ways. Yeah, it's for it's sure. really tough for the for the up and coming players or even the the the, the so-called journeymen that are, you know, they've had a career out of tennis but they aren't necessarily the next Nadal Djokovic Federer's. Um, there's been a lot of talks about increasing distributing mm-hmm. prize money better for the earlier rounds so it's not just top heavy where most of the prize money is for the later rounds it's more distributed there's a lot of talks about that actually mm. um, that I was reading about but it's it's tough definitely but will there be any action though probably will there be right. any action at some point though? at least a yeah. little bit <laughs> yeah there's it's it's a controversial topic for sure there's I mean there's players unions as well for the, for the tennis see. tour it's a it's a it's a definitely a yeah. hot topic well, on that note, one really what other sports do you play or watch? I've got an interesting, relevant story, and okay. I don't know if this—I I know this applies to racing. I don't know if it's RAS, NASCAR or F1. I think it's just amateur or semi-pro racing, where all the professionals are sponsored by companies, but the actual backbone of the racing industry is rich people who just want to race. Because to race, you have to have your own car, your own crew. It's really expensive. Even if you don't have a crew, if you want to spend a weekend racing your car, it's going to cost you two, three thousand dollars just in, you know, your you need tires and everything else, and you have to rent out space. Tires, just tires. So just in tires and maintenance. The people that your professional racers race against are all rich people who are insanely wealthy and can afford to hire their own crews, and they're not even in it to win. They're in it because they enjoy it, and that's where all the money comes in that funds the industry and then the professionals are just you know they're getting like a they're being sponsored to to play in that to be competitive so yeah yeah i'd hate to see that happen to tennis but it's 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 crazy how that works yeah that's i think that's also related to there's a lot of betting that goes on as well um in in tennis and i'm, I'm sure all the other sports it's just that oh, that's sure. a huge market actually i mean yeah it's betting really Jay, would you ever I mean, bet it's... money would you ever bet money or have you ever betted money bro <laughs> on on tennis matches i actually I, I feel like my my tennis iq actually isn't that bad but i don't know if i'm i think i'm a little too risk averse to, to actually put in money into that to be honest i've never done it yet but i see I do it on, you do it i don't even like have to know who the on, players man. are just I give me two I, names just do it. and you i will just, pick yeah. one fair enough i'll pick enough. one fair and enough. that person Come will on, win man. Jay, you seem like the type of guy who would put you seem like the type of guy who would put ten thousand dollars on black in Vegas, man. Come on, <laughs> put some money onto tennis. <laughs> no, 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 no. But, but I guess related to the to the question you'd ask, yes, yeah, so I did club tennis on campus, and that was a, a a really fun thing. I think just to get out of the grind of school. Do you know how um, I play tennis? I play tennis like cricket. Okay. I play tennis. So like you cricket. don't play like, tennis. Like somebody is what serves you, the ball. Basically, like I just like whack it. <laughs> No, 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 I don't play tennis. This one time I tried playing, I whacked the ball out of the fucking court. Like, I thought it's that easy to whack it. There's, you need control, apparently you do. Like, I, I, I didn't expect the ball to go flying that easily. Because, like, uh, I'm, I'm used to cricket. Right, 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 right. Like, that's the only handheld sport that I'm used to. But it's interesting, man. It's really interesting. Yeah, that's definitely not going to win you a lot of matches. Don't play for dude. shit. I, I don't think you're getting a single point off, like, ever. I ain't, buddy. <laughs> 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 but but I think also <laughs> nope. I think related to the question is I spent a lot of time I, I did a lot of clubs activities whatnot in high school and I think I, I really pushed myself there I think in college I took a lot of time to just reflect and spend a lot more time thinking just literally sitting in my room and logicing through things developing thoughts on different topics that I yeah. really never questioned um, and and I think I spent yeah. a lot more time doing that to be honest um, so maybe my, my resume isn't as padded as it was in high school uh, to help me get into the program, but, but mm-hmm. I, I do think I've developed a lot more as a person, um, and I think that's important for a lot of people. That's, to do. that's honestly okay, the biggest man. part of college. Yes. For sure. 
Yes, and on that note, guys, thank you, thank you so much for joining us, Jay. You have been a fucking gem on this show. Thank it's you so much for coming on. We didn't ever thank expect to be me. talking about tennis, but hey, we talked about tennis. Yeah. Um. <laughs> and yeah, guys, we're done. Peace. Adios. Goodbye. <laughs>